William, are you there? You need to unmute yourself, William. Yes, I'm here. I'm here. How are we doing? You all right? I'm good. I'm good. Good. Where are you joining from? I'm joining from South America. Right. Uh, what's on your mind today? I was listening to you guys uh, speaking about Christianity, describing okay. a lot. So you're a Christian, yeah? Yeah, I'm a Christian. He's a pastor. I'm not How a pastor. Is he? I thought I'm, not I, I thought I'm, not, I'm not paid by a church, but I was listening to you guys um, a while on on previous programs. Right. Even today, Have you got any questions for us, or you want us to ask you? you, you are, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm just giving you a, a little brief introduction. You're sure, describing yeah. a lot about you know pastors, evangelists, and I did ask a question in the chat. Um, are you labeling all of these people as convicts, as as people out to get people money, as rich guys? No, no. We are not saying all Christians are like that. No. Okay, okay. I, I just at wanted no, to clarify. At that. no point did we ever intend or <clears throat> mention it it applies to all Christians. In fact, the Quran says, you know, the Christians are the closest to the Muslims because really? some of the rabbis and their uh, pastors, you know, they spend all night uh, in remembrance in the dhikr of Allah, you know, in worship of Allah. And this is uh, something from the Quran. So, William, I, are you... Uh, what denomination of Christianity are you from? You really want to know all of that? What, what denomination of, of Islam are you? We are Sunnis. Sunnis? Okay. Yeah. Now you want to answer I my remember question? this gentleman. I, saw, I talked to him with Hamza, by the way, and he's a, he's a tough cookie because he won't res respond with just like simple stuff. Remember the last time that we talked to you, we just said we're just... It's for conversation. But you didn't read a voice that I asked you. But anyway, let, let's move on. Okay, so I asked, I asked <laughs> like, a question about I your... didn't call it, right? <laughs> Pardon me? Yeah, I asked you a question about your denomination. You oh, asked oh, me. Okay. I answered that, you. That's, that's fine. That's I fine. answered you very quickly. I'm, I'm expecting you to answer. I, I belong to the denomination called the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Have you heard about okay, that? Okay, that's fine. No problem. You know, you heard about that? It's always good to be a friend so we know from which angle to approach you. Because we have don't want to about, misrepresent you. That's the reason we ask what denomination you belong to. Yeah, so we can then approach you from that. Have angle. you heard about the denomination? Uh, tell us briefly about what's the difference between a Seventh day Adventist and, say, an evangelical, you know, Christian. There are differences. For example, um, we believe in inspiration of the Holy Spirit. We believe in keeping the full Ten Commandments. We believe in keeping the Sabbath. We believe okay. in keeping, observing the laws of kosher. We believe right. in the Old Testament. Yeah, that's, that's basically in a nutshell. If you want more, you can ask. Interesting. So what day do you maintain the Sabbath on? Saturday. That's the seventh day. Okay. So for you, the holy day is Saturday, not Sunday. That's right. Okay. And why do you think the other Christians have moved to Sunday instead of keeping it on Saturday like the Jews did? That's history. Um, the Bible predicted it, it was changed. And we right. know historically in the days of Constantine, the change was made, but it's not right. biblical. Okay. Uh, what would you say is your main doctrine as a Seventh-day Adventist? Quite a few. Um, I believe Give that. Me the top. Well, well, Give me the top. We have, we have some in common with mainline Protestants. We believe in the Trinity. We believe um, God is eternal. We believe in the Holy Spirit combined, right. three co-eternal. We believe in the Sabbath, of course, which sets us apart. We believe in a pre-advent judgment, meaning that there is a judgment that is going on because Jesus said in Revelation 22, when he comes, he's coming to give his reward. So in order for Jesus to give people a reward, it means that they have to be judged prior to him coming. So we believe a judgment is going on now. Okay. We believe that there is a sanctuary in heaven and Jesus Christ is our intercessor. We also believe that when someone dies, they don't go to heaven or hell. They just remain in the grave. Oh, forever? They just remain in the grave or until the resurrection. Oh, exactly. Yeah, we believe the same. <laughs> As Muslims, but, we but believe you guys the same. don't believe the same. It's a different. No, because we do actually. We we call it the no, animal body. The soul is, is immortal. We don't believe the soul is immortal. Oh, so what happens to the soul once it's entered in hell? Does it die? No, no. What we believe is the entire individual is the soul so i i don't have a soul i am a soul what? hashim doesn't have a soul he is a soul so when you die what made you in the beginning separates 
go back to Genesis 2, 7, the dust of the ground and God's breath created a soul. When you die, it's a separation, so you don't have any soul anymore until you get that at the resurrection. So let me get this right. You said the souls are eternal or they are not eternal? They are not eternal. Only God is immortal. They are not immortal. Okay, so what? that's a question I asked you. What happens once a soul enters hellfire? Well, a soul is not in hellfire right now. I didn't that's say right future. now. No, no, no. I didn't say right Nobody, now. I... Anybody who dies, we believe that those who die, they are simply in the grave, whether you're good or you're bad. When you are resurrected, then you will get your eternal reward, whether it's in heaven or it's in hell. That's not okay, what so he's saying. The soul is, the soul is punishing right now. That's I'm not, not saying right at. now. Look, you the, the soul dies, according to you, which means it separates yes. from God. Is that what, you, what you're trying to say? When the soul dies, there's no life. Correct. Okay, good. But no where does the soul... Between the, between the separation from God until it's suffering in the eternal hellfire, where does the soul go? It doesn't exist. Simply. It doesn't exist. No, it doesn't when, exist. So who is resurrected on the day of judgment? When Jesus comes, he is going to resurrect just as he resurrected so many people in the past. Okay, so no, the soul doesn't Lazarus exist for so that period, and then it exists. I didn't hear you. Are you saying, you know, when somebody dies now and the soul separates from God, then it ceases to exist. But then when Jesus comes, this same soul will resurrect. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. When he comes, the breath will be put together with the body again and people will resurrect it. Yes. Everyone. Okay. And from then onwards, the soul is eternal. Yes. But they will not be disembodied souls. They're still bodies, but eternal. Yeah. For those who go to heaven, that is. Okay, no problem. Maurice, you got a question for William? I just, I didn't understand what he was saying. So you're saying the soul ceases to exist? Correct. When you die, yeah. It, so when Actually, you die... Let me, let me just say this. The idea of the immortality of the soul is um, is rooted in Greek mythology. It's not biblical. I'm speaking from a, the standpoint of the Bible, right? So I just want to make that clear. Yeah. Well, there are many things that you mentioned are not biblical either, but we'll get... Like there. what? Like what? Uh, like the Trinity. Oh, you really think so? Well, you can yeah. show me any show me any person, any prophet, any messenger who worship a triune God from the Bible, old or New Testament. Go ahead. I would like to start from the beginning, which is the Old Testament, and the very first verse in the Bible, Genesis one one. Yeah. Right. Uh, it says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Yeah. Sorry, before you start giving the passages. Let's understand the term Trinity because we might be using it in a different way. So what is your understanding of the term and the concept of Trinity? The same understanding you have. I've listened to you, so I know you have the same understanding. But, but go ahead. Well, and I haven't listened to you, so I need to know what you understand. I think it's the same understanding. God exists in the form of three beings. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are closely united that they are described as one, but they are not one being co-eternal, co-redeemer, and they work in unity. In essence, they are one. In unity, they are essence. They are one. So you're saying there are three beings, but they are not one being. Exactly. Okay. So when you say God is one, what do you understand by that phrase? Unity. The concept is unity. Okay, so it's like a team. That's right. That's right. So you're, you believe if in you a know, team if of you, God. If you know cricket, if you know cricket, if I can elaborate. Um, you know, the World Cup is Maybe used for the English, I think most people are familiar with that. The English cricket team. You understand? One team, yeah. but 11 members. That's, that's how I understand it from the Bible. So you believe God is a... For you, the three beings are actually a team of God? The three beings make up one God. I don't have to explain it because God is mysterious. No, you have to because you already said three beings. Ah, uh, there it is. Finally, it comes God, out. I don't have to explain God it. is beyond me, outside and above me. Okay. If the Where in the Bible does it say God is three beings? There are many places. Show me one. Jesus Explain. said it in Matthew 28. But I want to Explain. go with Genesis. I want to start with Genesis. Okay, go on. Can I do Show that? Genesis where the three, are, three beings make up can one I, God. Can I do that? Can I do that? Genesis 1.1. 1, 1. The word for God there is Elohim. And, mm. and all of you are Bible scholars. So you know what that means, a plurality. All right? No, it doesn't, actually. It, it does. But I'll tell it you does. why. Why it doesn't. If it you does. know If you know Hebrew, you wouldn't be saying that. It does. 
It also refers to pluralist the, many gods. They Plural. call it William. It William. Many gods. William. When the God said to Moses, I send you as Elohim to Pharaoh. How many Moses was there? I said it was. No, no, no. How many Moses? Course. Just, Ex just Exodus wait. Seven, one. Just wait. The How many Moses were there? We know, we know it was one. We know it was one. Okay. So you know one. Did he call him Elohim or not? Did he call him Elohim or not? He's, he's checking the Elohim. passage. Okay. You can check Elohim. the passage, William. No, no problem. Take your time. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Exodus seven one. Elohim. In fact, Exodus seven one. That that's the correct word. Yeah, because over there Moses is referred to as Elohim to Pharaoh. Yes. As I said here. No, not okay. only that's Elohim. No, no. You it's said plural. Elohim is plural. Am I yes, right? Yes, it's plural. You said okay. it's plural. Not only Moses was not Moses only. single no, no, listen, being listen, listen, or a, listen. or a plural being. Listen. Not only is it referring to God as in the Creator. The Almighty. It also refers to other people who are called gods. No, no. Stay, stay with my question. Stay that. with my question. How many Moses were there? How many Moses were there? Well, it's a no-brainer. It was just one. One, yeah. So yeah. why why did God call him Elohim? Because he made it he made it clear he was to act as God to Pharaoh. No, no. But you you, you, you switch the, oh, no, 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 no. the term Elohim to God now. Stick to the term Elohim. According no, to I'm you, saying, Elohim saying, is plural, no. am I right? No, I'm William, saying listen, Elohim. Listen to the question first. According to you, the term Elohim is plural. Yes. The question we are asking you is that how does this Elohim plural term apply to a singular being like Moses? That's the question. It applies to Moses because Elohim refers to the Almighty God as well as to humans. All right? Okay. It's not exclusively to God. Good. So when it applies to human, does it still maintain the plurality or it becomes a singular now? Well, of course, it will be singular. God also speaks as a singular That's being. Thank you. No, but if I go oh, to go Genesis. On. This is earlier. You, you emphasize that it is but always I plural. Finished. I wasn't finished. That's why I okay, said I need to go back to Genesis 1. I said I need to go back to Genesis 1. So if you go to Genesis 1, 26 and 27, it will tell you the making of man. Where God, God uses plural terms. He said, let us make man. Then the next verse, he said he made man in his, which is singular, his image, male and female, created he, singular again, them. Right? The fact is, God speaks on both accounts. He can speak from a plural point of view. He can speak from a singular point of view. And we find that in, in Isaiah 6 as well, where God says, hey. No, no, hold, hold on. Let's stick to one passage at a time. Yeah, so I'm in Genesis. Passage, but, in no, Genesis, listen, three, no, no, in Genesis, Genesis 1, 26 and 27, Genesis 1, 26 and 27. Which, which you refer to, in one he says us, in the other and he says him. So in right. one it's implied plural, but as, 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 as you take correctly pointed out earlier, this is a majestic plural. Which if but you I never in, said a majestic plural. You no, may say on. that. I didn't hold say on. that. Let me finish. Listen to what I'm saying. So majestic plural implies in many Eastern languages, not just in Hebrew, Aramaic, Arabic, and so on. Okay? This also in Asian languages, in, in Hindi and Urdu, and so on as well. The reason this is not plural, because you and I know God is one, not plural. The Bible never said one person. What What is the first, what does Deuteronomy 6, 4 say? It didn't say one person. He said, hear, O Lord. I didn't say Hero one person. I said one. I didn't use the term person. This is a Christian term you I guys agree, use. I agree God is one. In fact, in fact even one. the term being, which you used earlier, the Bible doesn't say one being either. I agree God is one. But so one what? Is he one person? No, Can the I question is one. Word? When you say one, what do you Can mean I... by? Do you mean by one entity? Or do no, you mean multiple one entity. entities? Not one entity. So is it multiple I mean, entities? I mean three beings unified as one where is that in the bible this is the concept of god in deuteronomy 6 4 the sharp the sharp no the no it's not no it doesn't listen, say listen, that let in me the read shema. can i read genesis 2 it for does you not say that in the shema this is a christian church can understanding I, from the fourth century no 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 can i read genesis 2 to give you an idea okay so you read genesis 1 we didn't see any three in one being now you're moving to genesis no, no, 2. I, I didn't say three but i said the concept of plurality is there no, the wait, wait, we, we, we agreed based on the language. No, no. 
it is implied I, as a I, I respect your view on your majestic plural um um, this is not my view. This is a question. I respect your view. view well. uh, the William, part. William, do you know do you know a commentator of the Bible called J. J. Wenham? There are many commentators. I yeah. don't know. No, well, this is now I'm giving you a reference. Go ahead. He's one of the great commentators of the Bible. He speaks about plural, uh, plural, uh, pluralis magistatis. The commentary on the NIV, pluralis magistatis. I have not met a single Jew, a single Jew that says all Elohim, and remember, Septuagint was for the Jews, not for the Christians. Old Testament was for the Jews. I have not met yet a single, a single Jew that says Elohim, it, it means a plural of gods. I don't believe my theology on what the Jews believe because they have oh, many oh, things wrong. It's their book. It's their book. It's their book. How they interpreted it. You can have a book. You don't have to necessarily interpret it correctly. Okay, so you have the magic spirit, but then none of their scholarship is worth a lick of salt, right? None of their understanding is worth a lick of salt. I'm not criticizing this scholarship, but I'm saying... Okay, well, why is your interpretation good and there's bad? I'm just saying in this context... I in don't agree with the Jews. In your, I in, don't in agree your with eisegesis Jews. of this particular, this is the problem that you're suffering from, is you're literally reading into the passage, whereas the Jews are telling you, this is how we understand it. Do you believe everything the Jews says about the Bible? Every commentary they make on the Bible, do you believe that? No, but I the question, take their word on the Old guys, Testament. Guys, just one second. Do you believe everything the they beginning? say about the Old Testament? Mark, yeah, you're, diverting. Right. you're diverting. Yeah, the bro. question, the question I asked you no. at the very beginning is no. to show me explicit evidence from the entire Bible. I don't want your interpretations based on certain passages like us and him. I want explicit evidence from the entire Bible where anyone worshipped a triune God. Are you able to provide that? This is what I'm saying. I'm saying the mere fact that you have plurality in the beginning does not rule out the possibility of more than one person. Do and you have I'll explicit to, evidence or not? I will, I will get to another verse. Hold on, hold on. I'll get to another verse. I'll get to no, another but you, verse. your sources are not explicit. You I, I never said your it, no, no. I never not said it's Not even the holistic un understanding of Christians and Jews scholarship. It is your own eisegesis, William. My I question, never said, I never said my it's question explicit. therefore, is very explicit. And I I'm never said explicit, explicit evidence. As on, on Holy if you're Spirit, unable again. to show me a single prophet in the entire Bible who worshipped a triune God, then the question is either you know better than the prophets, including Jesus, or you're doing your own eisegesis, which is extra biblical. Which one is it? Are you aware of the Bible history from the beginning, the fall of man, the Jewish era, until Jesus comes? Look, I don't have time for any of this. If you don't no, have no, explicit no. evidence, no. just Unless say so, so we can move on. No, unless you understand the concept, why the Trinity is not clearly, explicitly said, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, unless you understand or the, the, New era, Testament. the concept. Or the New if Testament. You go, if Ashen, you go to Genesis, Ashen, 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 let me finish. We should finish. ask him, we should let ask William, when did the Trinity be, be, uh, appear first? When did it no, no, appear first? No, no, we don't first? need to. Shake, I'm not going to sidetrack. I'm going to stick to the Bible. The Trinity has so for been him, from the, the Bible. If he's unable to find it in the Bible, then it will be considered as extra biblical evidence. Hold on, hold on. The Trinity has been there from the beginning. Genesis show 1 me that. Show me why, why you're struggling spirit. to show me a single passage I, from the entire Bible. You're not listening. I'm listening. I, told you I listened to your Genesis. Then you moved on to Genesis 2. I told you about plurality. Come on, please. Just I say you don't have the evidence. And okay, you last, went off with your here, William, here, Here's your last story. opportunity. You got one minute to no, provide no. explicit evidence. Can if I you don't have, you? I'm going to bring somebody else in. You had a guy a long time. Just give me some yeah. time, please. No, give I'll give you one time. minute because the thing is, we already gave I, you time. I showed you in plurality you in verse 26 or 27. You didn't, why, why did you Moses? Did all right, all right, all right. My minute is going. Don't interrupt me. Let me finish. My minute is going. I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish. Please respect what he's saying. Yes, my minute is going. Don't you just interrupt me. So, what I'm saying in Genesis 19:24. God said that one Lord was in heaven and he called fire and brimstone from the Lord out of heaven. So where did you get two Lords from? So you when Jacob two lords wrestled from. with wait, wait, God, guys. Do you believe who in two was lords this from? God Jacob wrestling? This William, that's fine. I will, I will use that evidence against Go you. Ahead, against do you them. actually believe in two Lords? 
Where did you get that from? When Jacob wrestled with God, who was he wrestling? But answer the question. I'm, I listened to your your reference. Do you actually worship two lords? No, I worship one. Thank you. So why okay, bring it up? You, you shot yourself in the foot. Me, because show me the dream one. God is not one being like Allah. Show me something you doesn't believe in. <laughs> I've got even. God let me is not one being like Allah. Okay, hold on, hold on, William. No, we have no body. problem showing oneness of Allah from the Quran. It's all over the place. Different from Yahweh. You guys are the ones struggling with the three in one in the Bible. You can shake your head as much as you want. So far, you fail miserably to show a single explicit evidence of this three in one being. I showed you the plurality aspect and you refused to accept it. You didn't. You believe in a plural God, a team of God. Is that what you showed a plurality? I said from the beginning, God is one. I said that. Okay, so show me me if God is one, then why do you mention the three then? Because God is in the form of three beings. Why Where does they say that in the Bible? Why, why stop at three? Why stop at three? Why does the plurality stop at three? Give me where does it say it's it's just three? Because here's what you do. Okay, and this I'm is what Jesus said. This is what you just wait one second. Let me finish my let me finish my train of thought. Here's what you do. You are literally, I can write an entire volume of books with the way that you approach things. You literally go, let me go here for for this. Let me go here for this. Let me go here for this. Let me go here for this. And you've literally strung You're asking the questions that I'm answering you based on what you ask. Let, okay. let him finish his point. Okay. Let him finish his point. My point being is, why are you stopping at three? And where does it say that these three are one? Where does it say that? I stop at three because that's what the Bible says. If you go to Matthew Where twenty-eight, does the Bible stop at three? if you go to Matthew twenty-eight, Jesus says, "Go and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy uh-huh. Spirit." Then okay. you go to John. Hold Jesus on, stop says, for a second. Don't, yeah. don't. Let's deal with Matthew. Where does it say that baptize? I could say, "Go baptize in the name of Hashem." Uh, in uh, with the Sheikh over here and 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 in William. And where does it say that us three are one? It doesn't have to say the Austrian one, but the mere Why fact. Not? You, you, That's why you are explicit. Have, no, no, this is your problem. You, don't you want to have every voice say, Father, no, Son, Holy Spirit. I, I, just you know, I did not put any word in, the, you won't in find my that condition. The mere fact Jesus said there is the word name. You didn't say name. Not based it was on singular. Names. In the name, not names. In the okay, name what is, of the Father. What is the name of the Holy Spirit? In the name, the Holy Spirit. He doesn't have. That's not a name. <laughs> He's also a comforter. It's not a name. He's comforter. Okay, so let me go to What's the name of the Father in the New Testament? Why did Jesus say, I will send the Father, I will send the Spirit, the Father will send the Spirit in my name? How many persons do you have there? You have no, Father, no, but we are, you hold have on. Spirit, you and see, you, have you, you said in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. What is the name of the Father in the New Testament? The name of the Father is Abba in, in, in Aramaic. It's Father. What is it? That's what father we, is not that's a name. Jesus, that is how Jesus referred to him as Father. Bro, is this the level of argument you have? The father is a name? Seriously? What do you understand by names? Now of I have to define to you what a proper noun is? Seriously? What do you understand by name? If Jesus okay. says... Listen I'll tell you what. Jesus says... William is a name. Go but to William father. is a man. Is man your name? Father. William, is man, father. William is a in, man. In, is in man Hebrew, your name or is Greek. William your name? Which one in is Greek, a proper noun? In Greek, God is Theos. But Theos I'm is saying, not a name either. If Jesus is even saying, the sentence is called Theos in the Bible. If Jesus is saying the God of God the world, the Father, he, before, if Jesus addressed God as the Father, what else yes, should I do? What he else did, should I do? He did. He what did else, address, what else should I address? Him? You know, I like the way you said he addressed God as the Father. So you yes, believe Jesus God had a God? Pardon me? Do you believe Jesus had a God? In his human nature, of course, the father was like, just like we what are he, humans, Was he fully God. God in his human nature? Was Jesus yes, fully God? Yes, he was fully God. There's so a, there's a fully God, God has a God, right? There is a verse that you didn't uh, you didn't allow me to read the last thing, so I'm going to read it now. William, Open that's, there, that's, the fully, Micah, that's the fully God human. Micah, Micah, five, have a God. Two. Micah 5, 2. Open it for me, please. I don't need Micah to open five. anything for you. You're not answering any of the questions. Are we so here is what Micah 5 2 says. Can you, can you please answer my question? Here is, let me, does the fully you, man uh, who is fully God, does he have a God? In his human nature, I said yes. But in his human nature, he he's fully is God, God, right? The son. Can, I, can I read it first? Can I read no, no, it first you no, need no. to answer this question properly. In his human nature, he was fully God. Am I right, Jesus? Yes. Good. This fully man and fully God has a God. In his human nature, of course. 
And God. In his human and God. He prayed to fully God. Fully man, fully God. You're not listening. <laughs> but he deliberately even made it. Let me throw a hand in the house. William. Don't, don't move on to the next one. I'll read his final word. You're deliberately evading the God of passage. I will read his final word. It's Micah 5 2. Listen to it. I'm not going to go to Micah. I'm not going to go to Micah before you answer. Hey, you don't want Micah. There's something we might get you don't want. Don't worry, there's a rule of grasp that as well. This is what it says. This is what it says. This is what it says. Just what wait. You wait. Get you are him. moving on, and I'm not ready Ephrata. to move on. You are moving on, and I'm not ready to move on. No one is. No one is ready to move on yet. Are you moving on Tell all me. the time? No. Are you, Can I get a chance? I'm just going to disregard that. Establish statement. who Jesus Hold on, is. Brother. Hold on, brother. Hold on, please. You must give me Hold a on, chance please. to establish who Jesus please, is. Please, please wait. Tell me what makes up a human nature. A human nature is a human nature. Is it a human being? <laughs> a human being. What makes up a human being? <laughs> What makes up a human being? Yes. It's a combination of the dust of the ground and okay. the breath of life. When God created man, right. no, man is like a, a human being. A human spirit, right? Call it no, like a human no, spirit. No, not a human. Call it a soul. That's fine. No, oh, okay, no, we'll call no. it a human soul. We'll call it a human soul. Is that fair? I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, human soul, fine. Nah, I think you're the one who gives us man, you know, benefit uh, of the doubt. You say you call it the human soul. soul. I, say I, say I say fine. I say fine. Okay, great. Now tell me what makes up a what divine being. Down. These are your words. What makes up a divine being? A divine being is a divine being is God. Eternal. Bro, Not bro on, no. What are the on the right, God has no. life in himself, on the right, uh -huh. original, and unborrowed. And there's a there's an essence of divinity, correct? Yes. Okay, so now explain to me how Jesus Christ, if from your worldview, contains both of these essences. This is not my worldview, by the way. This is the Bible view. That Jesus you Christ. You believe it to be true, man. Jesus Christ. You believe it to be true. Don't subscribe to that view. Jesus I want to know if a human being... Go ahead. I'm gonna... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Jesus Christ mm -hmm. is eternal God the Son, always existed in heaven, because of the plan of salvation, you're, you're preaching. he became you're a man. Preaching at this point, God became a man. I, I, I get all that. that. You're preaching. I'm going to read the verse now. Explain to me how a life. human being is composed of a human soul and a divine being is composed of a divine essence. Then explain to me how Jesus Christ, from your worldview, your understanding, your belief, had both. It's simple. His Great. you his divine nature. He became a man and he took on human nature. That's okay, so he, that means he changed he gave, nature. Up, he gave up the divine nature, right? Now he no longer has it, right? He laid no. it aside. What is that supposed to mean? It was yeah, dormant. It was not active on his own behalf. But he God cannot human. change nature. God okay. cannot change nature. Where does the Bible say that? Don't even give him that. He's literally, he just admitted that they just committed murder for no reason of, of a human being. Where because does the Bible say he cannot change his nature? I like a verse. Malachi in Malachi 3 6. I okay. like that verse. The yeah, entire there you verse. Go. There you go. Now we're going to take you to Malachi, and that's I like the entire verse. I like the entire verse. But uh, let me read Micah 5 2, just in fairness. Yeah, so you, you hold on, it? William. Do you actually believe God? But do you believe you God can him. change his nature? Let's start with that. Do you what actually believe God can change his nature? God can change his nature. Can God change his nature? Of course, he can do anything. Wait a minute. When you say anything, when you anything say anything, that, anything okay, let me ask you this. Can, can, do, hold on, do. hold on, William. You said God can do anything. Can yes. God become Satan? God will not become Satan. So you just Satan change your mind Satan. very quickly. No, Only when, when you say this anything, no, when you say this anything, you're going to oh, go now you're qualifying it. Good, to good. illogical like um, questions. You're going to ask a lot of illogical questions, which doesn't <laughs> make sense. It is impossible for God to become Satan, and we all know Good. that. Let's, let's let see me, another let thing. Let me read my Wait a minute, me William, read. wait a minute. Here's another you thing that's impossible. Want me to read Here's my another God. thing which is impossible for your God. Professor, can Professor, God, you wait a minute. Want me to read can, my God. can your God, can your God <laughs> create another God like him? No. Okay, so another <laughs> impossible thing. Another let's see the third thing impossible. Can your God tell a lie? No. Good. Lots, see, of, lots of things that God can't do all no, of a no, sudden. No, no. When when the Bible says that nothing is impossible, you are looking at it from the negative things that we know it is not. Of course, in I'm looking from the negative things because so you cannot, unless you told us you he cannot, cannot improve those the things. negative Man, things, then I wouldn't have asked you this. But you said he can do everything. Let me anything. let me read this verse for you, and I'll close. I'll give another person a chance. It says in Micah, but like you get him, Ephrata. 
though you are little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of you shall come forth to me. This is referring to Jesus' birth, the one to be ruler in Israel that Gail, that Gabriel told Mary before he was born, whose goings forth are from of old, from everlasting. So this is this is Jesus here, everlasting God being born as a man. I don't have to question it. I don't have to doubt it. The mere so, fact that he you, chose look, to do it you, is if fine. If you believe by me. that God can change His nature, that means the no longer he when He changes His nature to something which is not God. Yes, the question remains: Is He still fully God? Because a fully God, God will not have the limitations of a man. Do you agree? He can choose to do that. Choose and that's to do what? what? Did, to but be I just asked. Okay, can that he choose he to lie? Look, can he choose? You are saying. Can he choose you are to lie? Laying. You are laying some impossibilities with God and say he cannot. I'm not laying. I'm asking you logical questions. You said what? he can choose to do what he wants. Can yes. God choose to lie? God will not choose to lie because God. So is he can't his, choose to do everything. Then. His Thank character. You. Another it's impossibility. His character, professor. But What's my that? point is, my point is, Your point that is when when we left. get when we get to ask all of these questions, it is as though our wisdom seems to be higher than God's. That we can explain him. No, if the are, time comes, you know, if you ask you a Muslim this question, God, the Muslim will answer. To be God I'll tell you what. Let me ask the question to Sheikh Ibn Hazm. Sheikh Ibn Hazm, can Allah do everything except have wait, a wait, son because he doesn't have watch, a wife? Watch how a Muslim answers this that. question. Unlike being reckless like you. I understand. That, that. You're, you're muted, Sheikh. Yes, he can. Yes, yes, he can. Can Can Allah do everything? Yes. Even the things against his nature? No, not the things against his nature. It's against his nature to die. It's against his nature to die. It's against his nature to slumber. It's against his nature to sleep. It's against his nature to eat. It's against his. So when a Muslim, when a Muslim is asked this question, As God. can God do? Can God do anything? But if then we actually man, qualify the answer, we we qualify the answer in the correct way. Allah does what befits His Majesty, and Allah doesn't go against His nature. But, but, but you don't know. You are again. trying to put a limit I, on God. Let me, no, let me Allah. Let me okay, I'll tell you what. Allah. When the Bible says that God is That's immortal, wait a minute, wait a minute. If the if the Bible says God is immortal, would you dispute that? No, God in His, his oh. divine nature is immortal. I agree with that. The hundred and ten. Okay, good. Add divine nature. Okay, good. So, say that. so you're not limiting God by saying that He's immortal in His divine nature. You're not that limiting God, are you? I can't limit Him. That's Thank you. Is. So don't say immortal. we are limiting God when we say God doesn't do anything against his nature but where does it say that what? god cannot change his nature where does malachi it say three that god cannot you. become a man where in the bible malachi three. okay if you want that god cannot Quran like seven, where, where it says god is not a man where in the bible okay. does it say god here's cannot another, become a man here's another passage for you hosea 11 9. what does yes. it say does it say just read it don't tell me why don't you read it why didn't you read, read it, it? what is it what is it he said he, hosea 11 9. Hosea, and Malachi 3, 6. Hosea 11, 9. Yeah, read it. I will not execute the fierceness of my anger. I will not again destroy Ephraim. For I am God and not man. The Holy yeah. One in your midst. And I will not come with terror. But where does this verse say that I cannot change my nature to become a man? When God Are says you? that I am God and not a man, what do you understand? I'm not a man. What does man do? <laughs> God says, no, 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 wait a minute. Is well, God saying that he's a man or he's saying he's not a man? I not execute the fierceness of William, my anger. Is God saying that he's a man or not a man? God says, for I am God and not man. Thank now, you. Now, listen to was me Jesus now. Was Jesus man now, or no, was no, he not a man? Hold on, hold on. I'll answer your question. When God said this, was Jesus Regardless, born? regardless. When God said Once this, he, he, Look, born? when God says that he's not immortal, then he means it. When God said that he's I not a man, he means it. But you, you want you. to have your cake and eat it. You want to say Jesus I have is, a verse is God, but then he's a man as well. When I have God a verse explicitly says that he's not a man. I have a verse in Exodus. Exodus 16. I have a verse in Exodus 16. Right? Yeah, go on. What does it say? And this is what it says. Exodus 6. No, 15. Exodus 15. And I will read 15, from... 1, 5? Exodus 1.5. I will read from 
verse. Hold on, Exodus 15. Yeah, from verse 2. The Lord is my strength and song, and he has become my salvation. He is my God, and I will praise him, my father's God, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Now, this is emphatic. This is the Lord. The title. Is. The man Lord of war. Wait, wait. When he says the man Lord of war, is wait, wait, wait a minute. A first, and first, who is speaking here? Who is speaking? Yeah. This is Moses writing here under inspiration. Okay, so Moses is saying what? That God is man of the war. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. Okay. All right. When he says, well, hold on. When he says man of war, is that a title or is actually a man? Moses is describing God here as a man is of war. Is it a war. title Why? or is it an actual essence? Why? Which one no, 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 no. Forget about title. When we went to Hosea, you never said anything about title. Okay. So, you cannot, so you, you know why? Be wait, wait, should I tell you why? Why cannot be a man? Hear, hear me out. When did here God become a man point. according to the Christians? When? In the time of Moses or in the time of Jesus? When Jesus was born. Thank you. So Moses was no, before Jesus, no, right? He was no, not a man are before. You, are you aware of, of Christ? <laughs> That's what I'm telling you is a title. Testament. It doesn't mean literally no, no, man. No. You're, done you, wrong. you're done. Are Ancient. you aware of Christophanes in the Old Testament? Yeah, are but the Christ Whatever Christophan is you're talking about, he was not no, a literal man aware of before the incarnation. Are you aware of that? Yes, are I am. Are you aware of Yes, that? I am. Are you aware of a man appearing with a drawn sword to Joshua and Joshua worshipped him? A Jew, Joshua, a no, Jew. No, worshipping, worshipping, it doesn't mean, worshipping, it doesn't yeah. mean worshipping in, 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 in the sense. Do you know that? No, 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 no. Don't change the David word. David was worshipped. Daniel was worshipped. No, worship. no, no. I could show you the first. Are you aware? Well, Prisking you, Prisking you in Greek, it doesn't mean worship that no, you no, know. No, no, no. That's not Greek. No, Prisking you in Greek, it doesn't mean that. It does not mean that. Prisking you in Greek. William, what are you trying to say? You are you saying this man? And reject that word in Hebrew. Okay. So are you saying this man with a sword Let's was Jesus? Is that what are you saying? Okay. Saying Hashim, Hashim, Hashim. Appeared, get him, get him, him. William, William, William. Okay. Can you Let can you wait you. wait wait a second wait a second please please very important can you get Hebrew Hebrews uh, Hebrews uh, thirteen eight please chapter no, thirteen no. chapter thirteen uh, 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 verse eight in Hebrews please what does it say you, you I want you to get it and read Jesus it Christ please. is the same yesterday today and forever is that yeah am I quoting this so, correctly Jesus Christ again? is Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever. Yeah, so says so yes, that's what he says. So can you can you comment on that, please? Of course, I agree with it. Jesus Christ How? is the same. The very definition of the worldview violates it. You literally Jesus, said it with no, God no. that became Are you going to allow me to finish? Are you going to allow me to finish commenting? commenting? I was not saying the same. Are you going to allow me to finish commenting? When yeah. Jesus Christ came on earth, he became a man, he has a dual nature. That dual nature is Forever, it will not change. Okay, that is okay, only fine. Paul fine, fine. Says. Sheikh, give that him this. Give him Paul this. So explain to me. Explain no. to me how it's co-equal with the other two parts now, because now all the other two parts have to have a dual nature. Otherwise, it's not co-equal. They don't have to have a dual nature, young I'm man. Smash your doctrine, bro. I, I am saying every no, time it's not, comes no, down. it's not. If one <laughs> member becomes a human, you always backpedal. If one time. member becomes a human, there is no law that says that. The Father and the Spirit has to be human as well. There's no law. You don't take that, it. You don't believe. That's William, that's William. Your interpretation is fine. William, when Jesus, when Jesus was saying yesterday is the same yesterday, today, and in the future, yeah? When he was saying that, was it the divine side of him or the human side of him saying it? Jesus did not say that verbatim. It was written by Paul. But what I'm saying... Did Paul, saying, Did Paul lie? Did Paul lie about no, Jesus? No, no, no. no, so, no Paul's a liar, yeah? No, Paul is a liar. No, I never said that. But what I'm saying is... Paul said it himself. Go open you up have to go on the He said he lies to Gentiles. He lies to Gentiles. William, I think we have had enough now. You have to understand the beginning of Christ. You haven't showed us the three-in-one nature. Which was my initial question. You haven't showed that. So I, you failed miserably there. I, so I, I, I answered you, one. but you came with no, your... No, you haven't. You haven't showed us the three. Majestic. You came you know with what your you, I tell you what. 
What you can prove I to us you? is that God is a team. Can I ask you? Which means it's a polytheism. No, 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 no. Yeah. Deuteronomy anyway, I think four, we gave you enough time. Deuteronomy that six waiting. four. Come back next time, and then we can explore some more. Deuteronomy six four. The Lord is one. Yes, that I agree. Is Thank you. The biblical position. Absolutely, I agree. agree. Not not a team of God. Come back next time, William. Others will be here all day. <laughs>